These are examples of the standard five chime whistle fitted to most New South Wales government railways steam locomotives from the 1930s onwards. The main exceptions to this was the suburban whistle fitted to tank engines like the 30 class and the 20 members of the 59 class which had Nathan three chime whistles. The whistle on the right with the vertically mounted activating lever was from standard goods locomotive 5268. The whistle on the left which uses a compressed air powered piston to push open the valve is from 3822. There were three main producers of these whistles, the New South Wales Railways Workshop, Clyde Engineering and Bayer Peacock. They were all working off plan number 46641 and although there may be slight variations between the whistles from each producer, the only real way to tell is to look for very small casting numbers on some of the parts. The parts of the whistles are designed to be interchangeable and I'll demonstrate that shortly by dismantling the whistle from 5268. The obvious question becomes though, if the whistles are basically all the same, why is there so much variation in the sound that the whistles make from one class of locomotive to the other? By the way, if you have one of these whistles and it has not been dismantled since it came off the locomotive, you're going to need access to a heavy duty workshop. Big tools, lots of heat. These whistles do not come apart easily the first time you attempt it. There are a number of factors that cause the whistles to vary in sound. It could be the angle that the whistle is mounted, the steam pressure that the boiler is operating on, the metal that the bell is made from. This bell off 5268 is cast iron, the one on 3822 is bronze. Slight differences in the dimensions of the bell chambers from one producer to the next also caused whistle sounds to vary. One factor that can cause a considerable variation in the sound of a whistle is the width of the slit between the disc that fits inside the steam bowl and the edge of the steam bowl. The width of that slit should be the same for the entire diameter of the disc. If the disc has worn unevenly and the width of the slit varies, then more steam can flow up into the corresponding bell chamber than what was originally intended, and that will cause a major change in the sound that the whistle makes. Sometimes this disc can become loose and rotate around inside the whistle when the whistle is being sounded, and that will cause a dramatic change in the sound that the whistle is making. For most classes of locomotives, the whistles were designed to be activated by pulling on a cable which hung in the roof of the cab. This cable was connected to a lever. If the whistle was mounted vertically, the activation lever was also usually vertical. If the whistle was at an angle, such as on the 36 class, or horizontal, such as the 57 class, the activation lever protruded out from the whistle at about 90 degrees. The base of the activating lever screws into the side of the whistle steam chamber and the whistle valve has a long stem that protrudes through the lever mechanism and the lever can push this stem in and out. Opposite the activating mechanism a cap screws in, underneath the cap is a spring and this spring pushes the valve tightly up against the valve seat. Instead of having a lever mechanism screwed into the side of the whistle, on the 38 class an air powered piston took its place. A valve in the cab would be opened, air would flow up into the piston, it would be pushed against the stem of the valve and that would allow steam into the whistle. A small vent was built into the piston and as soon as the valve in the cab was shut off the remaining air would escape from the piston and the spring behind the valve would push it back into place. The only difference in the valves between the manually operated and the air powered whistles was the length of the stem. The stem in the air powered whistle was slightly shorter.
As has been demonstrated, it would be possible to take a whistle off a standard goods locomotive, unscrew the activating lever, remove the valve and shorten its stem, screw in an air-powered piston, reassemble the whistle, put it back on a 38 class which is operating at a much higher steam pressure, and that whistle would now sound like a classic 38er. Here are some scenes where you can hear these five chime whistles being used. You'll notice that they sound very different.